Well, praise God. It's good to see everybody this morning. As Ben said, it's good to see so many of our extended family here as well. I have not been able to shake a burden, and uh, you know, a lot of me would like to just go on and look into all the wonderful things the Lord has, us, has for us in His Word. But I really feel like we need to take a step back and ask the Lord for wisdom with respect to some of the things about kids camp. Um, it's, certain, it's a homegrown thing that I believe God has blessed and I believe it's done a lot of good. I believe that everything that's been done over the years has been done with utter sincerity and with a desire to serve the Lord. Uh, so that's not even beginning to be in question. But I think we need to look and just see if the Lord doesn't have something a little bit higher, a little bit better for us in the way we do some of what we do. Uh, I, f I found it difficult Friday night when everybody was asking me, wasn't that wonderful, to give an answer that, wa that was honest without being honest. Uh, because it was, uh, I honestly felt there was a deep grieving in the spirit. And uh, in spite of many good things that were part of it that set in a different setting and a different fabric would have been wonderful. And I think everything, as I say, was done with great sincerity. But I believe the Lord wants us to, well, let me put it this way. How many of you were here Wednesday night and Friday night? How many of you would say you came away from Friday night with the same feeling you came away with Wednesday night? Something was different. Something had changed. And I just, I, I, I don't know, I think we have so many ideas that we've inherited, some from our culture, some from our own ideas that we need to, we need to assess. And I don't, I don't even know where to begin. I've had so many thoughts and I just going to have to trust the Lord to help me and I don't know that I'll be up here all that long, but still. You know, we've, our culture uh, seems to have a certain feature in it and it's in our schools, it's in our churches that we have kids that go through some form of education and then at some point there's a program. And the purpose of the program is to, truthfully, is to entertain the parents. And uh, to let them see how cute their kids are and how, you know, what they've learned a little bit, obviously that's part of it, but basically it's a program to entertain the parents. And uh, it isn't just church, it's school, it's everything. And it's become a, so much a part of our culture that we think that's the way it's supposed to be. And the, the difficulty is that it's awfully easy, awfully easy without there being any intent to do it, to get in the flesh. So that what you have is flesh and not spirit. You know, we, uh, what we call kids camp is really just our homegrown version of what most people call VBS, Vacation Bible School. Uh, when I grew up, I was in what we call DVBS. How many of you know what that stands for? It was Daily Vacation Bible School. And it usually was two weeks, by the way. Many of you who are tired now want to think about that one. <laughs> and the first one I would ever have been in, my mother was always the director, by the way during the years in which I would have been in that. That's what a pastor's wife gets to do. And not only that, her background was child evangelism. There's an organization that's devoted to that. And her father was a director for New England and the Maritime Provinces of Eastern Canada. So she came by it honestly. But she was the director. And, her, and our very first DVBS, with my dad as the pastor, I had a broken leg. And so I was in the hospital, so she was preparing at night, teaching in the morning, rushing up to the hospital in the afternoon to be with me, going back and just doing it all over again day after day. I don't know how she did it. No wonder she had white hair as young as she did. But I certainly remember those days. I remember them as being enjoyable. Uh, I felt like we, you know, the material we, we took seriously, and of course it was simplified, but we took it seriously and uh, it was a blessing. And by the way, way back then we sang hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And we sang, are you downhearted? And we sang, uh, oh, every day with Jesus, which is a song that we still sing. It's probably a lot of them. They were, they were well-established songs uh, in churches even, even back that far. I mean, I realize that's dark ages to a lot of you, but uh, 
It was, it was a time, and, I, and we had fun, we'd go out and play, but, but what we did, I think, was there was a, a, a focus and a seriousness about it that was, that was wonderful. And it was, a, it was a profitable time, and, you know, I believe like Josh has said, the Lord has used what we've done to sow a lot of seeds. And I think we saw Wednesday night some of the fruits of that, didn't we? But I think what we tend to do is to really seriously underestimate our kids and we underestimate the Lord. We think we have to dumb things down and make them fun and bring the world into it and bring so many things that just kind of move something that could be in the realm of the spirit into the realm of the flesh and then the words somehow make it okay. But is that really the case? And there were songs, like I say, that were wonderful the other night and set in a different setting with a different spirit would have been wonderful, but there was such an, such an overshadowing of that with silliness. Yes. And once you turn kids loose in the direction of the flesh and you make it okay, it tends to go further and further and further. And it's awfully easy for fun to become silly and for silly to become irreverent. And next thing you know, the Lord's grieved. And I think this would be a good time to interject something because, you know, how we, how we address this is, is as important as addressing it. Because the Lord is gracious and he's merciful. And I don't think that anybody would say that there's not a thing that's been done without utter sincerity behind it. But I remember something that happened in college. I've mentioned a number of times that Sue and I you know, for a time, for a long time, really on Sunday evenings, would travel into New York City to go to a church, and it happened to be a Pentecostal church. And, uh, you know, I'm not a Pentecostal, I'm just a follower of Jesus. I, I see some good, and I see some things that are less than that in every, in every movement. But there was, a, uh, there was one service one night, and there, were, there was a group of young men who sang a quartet. And it was obvious, I think, that they, had, they were looking at a lot of the professional gospel quartets, for what that's worth, and they were mimicking their style. And, you know, one of them spoke before they, they sang, and they were you know, talking about their desire to serve the Lord and to please Him and to do all of that. And then they sang, and it was so patently obvious to everybody that it was a show, that it was entirely done in the flesh, and yet... I, th I think it's fair to say they didn't realize it. And immediately afterwards, there was someone who began to speak in tongues. Now, I've heard a lot of things that are purported to be tongues by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in my life. Very little of it, I th it rings true to me, but some of it does. You know, it's in the Word. And this was one of those occasions when it did. The feeling and the tone of it was, was uh, it was somebody just speaking under control. It was just, they were giving out something. And it had, it just, there was this feeling in the spirit that was right. And then there was an immediately after it an interpretation. It wasn't anything long and drawn out. It was, there was an interpretation. And I wish I could recall all that was said. What I can recall is my feeling. And what I can recall is how it began. And it was not a tone of anger, it was not a tone of condemnation, it was a tone of grieving. And the, the, the message began something like, if you want to serve me and please me, and then it went on from there, without any hint of, you know, what's the matter with you, you, you know, it wasn't that at all. And I saw something from the Lord in that that I hope I never, I never lose sight of. Because the Lord didn't come down with a hammer. He didn't condemn. He didn't say, you, you're just a bunch of hypocrites. You say you want to serve me, but you, look what you're doing. He acknowledged their desire. Well, you know, isn't that where we're, we've all been and perhaps all are more than we realize? We're wanting to serve the Lord, but we just don't know. There's a lot of stuff we don't know. We're immature. We need to grow. And it's very, very possible to do, to do what, you want, what you're doing with a whole heart and wanting to please the Lord and then find out, whoa, wait a minute now, we need to assess here. We need to say, is this really what I want? And the Lord is so gracious with his children to, try to, to bring us along and to teach us, isn't he? 
without a spirit of condemnation. And I feel like we all need it because this isn't for just one or two. This is for me as well. There's a lot of us that haven't spoken up and have sort of said, well, everybody thought it was great. It must be me. Maybe I'm an old fogey. Um, but the real issue is not taste in music. The real issue is not any of those things. The real issue is, is it flesh or spirit? Amen. That's really what it comes down to. You know, we have an awesome opportunity to prepare a new, uh, the next generation because we don't know how long things are going, go, are going to go along. And we know the world is getting darker. And we know that people are going to have to have the real thing. And we cannot simply hand off a religious way of life and expect it to do any good. We're going to have to have young people that get it, that have a revelation of God for themselves and know how to move in Him. And truthfully, they need to stand on our shoulders and go much higher than we. And we need to do everything in our power to help them to do that. Well, I've seen a lot lately to, be, to encourage me greatly, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, Wednesday night was very encouraging. You see kids in all stages of development and, and awareness, and yet they have the freedom to come up here in front of a big crowd and actually express themselves. I think that's awesome. And uh, it was a special blessing to me Wednesday night in one regard was, you know, there, there was a theme that began to develop about God's love. And I'm sitting there. You know, I, I have a certain way of thinking, I guess it's just part of my calling. I'm sitting there thinking of where this is going and, and how this thought is developing. And I'm thinking of scriptures and the scriptures, you know, from here and there. And, you know, I just sat there almost with my mouth open. One by one, somebody would get up and use the very scriptures I was thinking about. I mean, the Lord was in that. And, you know, we, we kind of expected and put the kids in a place of trusting God and, and allowing Him to speak and, and develop in them what it's really about and how the body of Christ really works. And it worked. Praise God. You know, that's one reason why I think the Lord maybe delayed all of this till now, because we had such a stark illustration of what, of what this is about. I mean, how is it that the body of Christ operates? Does it operate on talent? No. No, it has nothing to do with talent, natural ability, cleverness, all kinds of things that we, we all have in varying measures. But it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with, with vessels that come to him empty and say, Lord, the only way I can do anything that will contribute is to simply be a vessel and let you anoint and, and quicken and use me in a way that will minister life to others. Well, I think we saw that and we saw great potential. But... You know, in, our, in the things that we do, is that what we're teaching? Think about that. If we're training kids to perform as opposed to minister without intending it. See, this is what, this is what other churches do. I mean, v VBS is just basically a program for kids where you come and you learn Bible material and then you have a program and you entertain the parents. That's kind of what it boils down to. Most places you will have a curriculum that has been purchased maybe from the denominational publisher. Uh, you, you might have some people that will use something from an independent publisher, like Answers in Genesis, for example. Uh, ours have been homegrown, and I think, you know, as I say, a lot, of, a lot of sincere work has gone into it. And thank you for, you know, I, I, want, I believe the Lord recognizes that, but I believe that there was a real grieving. We had an awesome opportunity on Friday night to influence people from the outside. And I truthfully felt my, there were times I was sitting there very embarrassed, very embarrassed at what message we were sending. To put up a lot of, a lot of things that honestly were silly and irreverent and then turn around and sing a great song doesn't quite flow. And I felt like the Lord was on the sidelines very much on the sidelines and longing to reach out and longing to convey the gospel. And you know, there's been some equivalence made with, you know, the idea of our putting on skits and what they do in the Philippines. I want to tell you, as somebody who has sat many times on the front row of many of the skits that they put on over there, they're not in the same universe, folks. 
they, there is a passionate, serious, sober presentation of the gospel. that I, It chokes me up no matter how many times I see some of those things. They just absolutely get to me. I've, I've sat in the front row watching. Oh, man. There is no comedy. There's no acting. You don't get to the end and say, wow, wasn't that great acting? A message just reaches out and grabs your heart and God gets in it. And that's what we need. Yes. And we don't, we don't think our kids are capable of that. That's nuts. They are. Yes. They will absolutely live up or down to our expectations. And we project a lot of things onto them and, and impose limits that, that God doesn't do. And I believe he can help us. I, have, I don't have any specific answers. But I believe that God wants us to, to get to a higher place where we have a different way of evaluating. Because if your evaluation of Friday night was... Was it fun? Was it entertaining? Then the answer is yes. You know, by every normal measure in our society, in our religious society today, it was great. But did it, what are we trying to accomplish? And I'm guilty of not, not having focused thoughts earlier, but again, maybe this is the time that the Lord wants to do this, because that's why I have to say we. Because that's, that includes me. We've had uh, the teachers and everyone who's been involved in that have come to us. And we haven't spoken up as clearly as we ought to have. So that comes back on us as well. So I just feel like, here's, here's one little principle that comes from the word. Because it has to do, let's, uh, where in the world am I? Is this scripture? Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, that's where it is. Because it goes to the issue of how we do things, not just what we do. I remember uh, many years ago, I think I recall this a while back for Jimmy, Brother Jimmy Robbins was there and he didn't remember this, but boy, it made an impression on me when we visited a, back in the days of the Jesus movement, I know there was a lot, a lot that was genuine in that. But anyway, it, was, it, it really turned a lot of kids loose in the flesh. We went to one coffee house one night, and they had some b band that was performing. Lord have mercy. If you didn't listen to the words, it was pure acid rock. They were lost in their spirit of it, and the kids were eating it up, and it was a purely flesh. But if you really tuned in good, you heard words that were you know, about receiving the Holy Ghost and this and that and the other. I mean, it was all, you know, they, they tried to put gospel words to worldly spirit and worldly music, and it just ew, did not work. But anyway, you know, we slipped out when we got very far into that. But anyway, in verse 17, Paul was talking about, uh, you know, divisions in the church where some wanted, followed this guy and some followed that, and, and, and he said that's not where it's at. He said, Christ, I'm breaking in on a thought, but I want to get to what is in the middle of this. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. But now he's going to qualify preaching the gospel. You know, you can preach the gospel in terms of the right words and it not do what it's supposed to do. And, and I see that everywhere in religion, many places in religion today. We have taken the gospel, men have taken the gospel and have dumbed it down and tried to make it appealing to natural men in some fashion. You know, it's a way to make you more successful in life or entertain people in and hope then to slip a message in and maybe grab them with that. Lord, we, ha we need to preach the gospel with God's spirit and let trust him to reach people's hearts with that gospel. He has the power to do it. Boy, we, we underestimate the Lord and we seek for a show in the flesh far too much. So does it matter how we do it? You better believe it. He says, not with words of human, of human wisdom. So it's not like you can take the message and say, okay, we got this great message. Now, how can we get it across? Let's, have, let's get together and figure out the best way to do this. That's not what he did, was it? But why did he do that? Or why not? What difference would that make? He said, lest the cross of Christ be emptied 
of his power. That's the thing. If we preach the gospel of Christ with the power of God, it's not going to save everybody, but it will save the ones God's working with. If we preach the gospel any other way, it will have no effect on anybody other than perhaps to build churches that are filled with lost church members who are deceived about their state. I believe God wants to lift us to a higher place where we get the next generation ready. We, help, we ask God to show us how to teach them that their place is to be a vessel that they, what they cannot do, Jesus can do through them at their level, of course. He is so merciful and gracious. You know, I was thinking about some of the accounts that have been captured in books in the past of people who have been allowed to visit heaven. You don't think that's ever happened? It's happened many times. And I remember pictures being painted of kids that had perhaps died in infancy, but they had parents that loved the Lord. And they were there, and they were being taught. Now, can you imagine some of the ways that we teach down here being applied there? And yet, the picture that I recall from having read some of that was, it was there was a simplicity, there was a meeting kids at their intellectual and spiritual level, there was you know, meeting them right where they're at and helping them, but not trying to, you know, entertain them and keep them engaged by appealing to the flesh. Of course, they, in this case, the flesh is gone. I understand that. But I just can't somehow make that jive. I, I, God, is anybody getting this? Yes. Am, I, am I wrong in this? No. I believe the Lord can teach us if we will seek him. But if we will, get, if we will get these ideas and principles in our heads, God wants to replicate, the, the, to bring forth the function of the body of Christ at every age. It's not like Okay, we're going to entertain them until they're 20, and then we're going to expect them to suddenly... No. We teach and train from the beginning what it means to serve the Lord and look to the Lord. And we trust God to bring them along. I mean, I, like I said, we saw kids in every stage of spiritual development. Many of them don't know the Lord, but they're reaching out, they're responding where they're at. God's, God's not requiring more of them at this time. We just need to pray. I believe there's been a lot of prayer, don't you? Yes. Look, at what, look at the things that we saw. Wasn't that wonderful? Praise God. I'm, just, uh, I, I'm thrilled with the potential, but I just, we, we need to step back and say, what are we trying to accomplish? Are we simply trying to replicate VBS the way it's done everywhere, or are we saying, God, lead us to a higher purpose so that when people come in from the outside, there's a spiritual impact that is not compromised by some of these other things. Praise God. Ben, you weren't here a minute ago. I was talking about the difference between what we saw in the Philippines. Am I right? Yes. There wasn't any of anything except a focused ministry of the Spirit of God portrayed in drama. Drama's not wrong. A lot of things aren't wrong. It's, it's what purpose are we, are we doing it for? And in what spirit are we doing it? Man, I saw kids there giving themselves to the to, to the portrayal of what it means to be lost and needing deliverance and Christ coming and, and destroying the powers of darkness and putting a coat of righteousness on somebody. Man, I couldn't, I couldn't hardly contain the emotion sitting there and watching. And I've seen, it, I've seen these things dozens of times now. I believe God can do that. If he'll change the way we think and the, change the, the, the measure by which we say, wasn't that great? I believe he can help us, don't you? Praise God. Well, I think I've, I've said my piece, but I just could not, I, I just didn't feel like we could go on. I mean, truthfully, I was struggling getting through the song service, just feeling this sense of a burden about this. I know others have felt it. But I especially don't want it to come across as condemning. It isn't that. I believe the Lord wants to teach us. He loves us. And even as I saw him correct that quartet that was so blatantly caught up in there, you know, the way they did things in their, in their fleshly performance. He was so gracious in reaching out to them. I believe, he, I believe he would do that with us too. 
I believe he longs to help us. So praise God.